I've had several people ask me, am I going to write a book or ask me to write a book about the writing tips and the techniques road and everything else. And to me, it seems overwhelming. You know, the, the idea of finding a publisher and to how to get this out there and even just to, to find the time to, to put words to paper and to find the drawings and everything else. You've done four books and I can't imagine it was just hand, I don't think you just walked up, set it on a table and somebody said, by, by George, let's print that. You know, I don't think that's how it worked. Go I wish. <laughs> My first book came about because uh, readers of the magazine that I was writing for were writing in and saying, we like Sam's articles, when's his book coming out? And until that time, I had no intention of writing books. Um, I got pretty much the worst grade of English you can get at school and still pass. So even writing magazine articles was a good grief, you can do that? Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. My first tip to people thinking about writing a book is don't worry about the pressure and the stress. Just think about it as being um, you're starting on a new adventure because that takes away some of the pressure straight away. And by adventure, what you're doing by um, starting the, the whole process of writing a book and getting it published is you're moving into a completely different world. It's got its own history, it's got its own culture, it's got its own rules and regulations, it's got its own beauty spots, um, it's got its own problem spots and so on. So. As you're going through the journey, then by thinking about it that way, it actually becomes quite fun because you're making discoveries along the way. Everybody's writing style is different. Everybody's writing requirements are different. And again, that's an adventure. It's like overlanding. We're all different. And if we accept that, then there are no set rules. What we have to do is to, do, is to write the way that makes us feel comfortable with the environment that we've got. For me, I need to find myself somewhere that I'm not going to be interrupted for hours at a time. No distractions, nobody saying, hey Sam, can you just... I, I don't need any of that because the way I write is to get into a thought bubble. So in other words, my head is where it's happening. I'm not even aware of the walls around me because my mind is so focused on the situation. And that's in part how I can weave in how things sound and they smell and because my mind is just back there in the environment. My writing technique involves that and also something that I call brainstorming in that when I'm writing a book, I let the memories come into my mind. I write about them as they come into my mind. Just get those words down. Once I've done that and I've emptied my head of those memories, then I'll get my journals out. And once I've got the most powerful memories down on paper, then I'll go back to my journals and I'll dig out the bits of facts and information, the colour, a person's name, a place name, those sorts of things that my brain hasn't retained. And that's how you get the depth as well as, I think, the buzz of the writing. Because you're following what your mind is, is bringing, bubbling to the top first. And another thing that I do is that, let's say I write for a whole day. The first thing I'll do the next day is I'll reread everything that I've written. And quite often I never get to a new bit because by rereading it I'm correcting and I'm adding in new bits because over the night my brain has percolated a little bit and oh yeah, gosh, I remember that. Yeah, that needs to be in there. Um, so you can spend two or three days just on that first day's writing, but that's fine. And some people need to just blat it all down, bang, 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 until they finish the book and then go through and do that. I kind of like my books to evolve a little bit more because in the end it's having a thread through your book that's one of the most important things. Yes, you can have all of these chunks of information, the different events and so on, but you've still got to have that thread. I always think about writing as being um, um, a, a neck chain, and it's my job to hang pearls on that neck chain. Each happening, each drama, disaster, delightful situation, each of those is a pearl, and it's my job to actually string them up together. So is the rumor true that your first book was not easy to get published? I spent two years looking for a publisher. Once I'd learned how to approach the publishers, what information they want, what they were going to want out of me, like most publishers at that time were looking for authors who could already offer them a three book deal. 
this is my first book, this is the synopsis for the second and the third. I wasn't even thinking that, I didn't even know if I could write. As I was writing Into Africa, I was sitting there thinking, well, this could be yet another stupid thing you've done in your life, but hey, <laughs> if you don't try, you won't find out. Right. And that's one of my biggest advices to people um, who want to, who are thinking, well, should I? Maybe, I probably can't, but try, try, have a go. Just let your imagination and what's going on in your head come loose. You may be the best author there ever has been, but you won't find out until you actually try. After two years of presenting my book to um, publishing houses, many of whom didn't even bother to reply, I think that's so rude. Um, most of them wrote me um, letters back, just standard letters, with my address at the top saying, thanks but no thanks. The last two, um, Random House and Virgin, um, and I'd say the biggies until last, wrote me personal refusal letters. Sam, we like your book, but you're not a media personality and that means we won't be able to sell enough copies to make it worth our while. Well, of course, I was gutted because these were the last two that I could choose. But then after I finished being gutted and feeling sorry for myself, <laughs> um, I sat down and thought about it. Hang on a minute, these are personal refusal letters. That almost never happens. And they have taken the time to say to me that they like my book. And they're right, I'm not a media personality. So I can see their point. They're businesses. They're not there to support starving authors. They're there to make money yes. for their shareholders. Um, so what am I going to do? Do you know, another adventure would be to learn to self-publish. So why don't I learn to self-publish? And maybe I can. And that took me another year and a bit to learn how to self-publish. And I published 600 books. And to my amazement, we sold all of those in six weeks. The development of the digital age in publishing made a huge difference because without all the typesetting and everything else, you give the publishing house um, a book ready format, a PDF, with everything laid out, page numbered, photos in the right places, etc, etc. And they plug it into their printing machines and, and out it rolls. One of my ambitions in life is to get as many people thinking, hey look, if an idiot like Sam could do this, then maybe I could too. Because you don't need to be anybody special to go and do a trip like the ones that we've been doing, do you? You just have to be free enough to be able to do it and sensitive enough to have um, common sense. I mean, most cyclists, I think, travel particularly well anyway. Because we're motorcyclists, we're out there in it all of the time. All of our senses are firing on all cylinders. We smell everything and we, we hear everything. We're just in tune with the environment. And being in tune with the environment, added to common sense, makes for fantastic travellers. So motorcyclists are almost ready to go already. Yes, they are. Speaking of, I'm itching to go do some more riding. That sounds like a plan to me. All right, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Christina and I really enjoyed catching up with Sam. We don't get to do that very often. Sam's got four books, Into Africa, Under Asian Skies, Distant Suns, and Tortillas to Totems. But my favorite is still the original, Into Africa. When Sam started his trip, he didn't even know how to ride a motorcycle, was sitting in a pub one day with all his mates, and declared he was going to travel the world. And his lessons and the stories of that first book really set the tone for the rest. It is outstanding. I highly recommend checking it out and giving it a read. Good travels, Sam. Looking forward to seeing you next time.